All right, so you guys have done the dopamine detox. You've completed the hard reset part. Now it's time for the entire rewiring process. Stay till the end because I'm going to give you a real tip that really helped me for the entire rewiring process. Now, if we want to inculcate long-term change, we need to find a metric or a system of measurement of how our time is being used, right? That makes sense. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're trying to win an Olympic event, let it be swimming, for example. And you're trying all these different techniques and different methods of freestyle, breaststroke. You're trying everything you can, but you're not timing your swims. So you don't know if you're progressing or you're getting worse. You don't know what you're doing because you don't have a metric or a measurement. Another example from my own life that I would tell you is a Fitbit. I'm not wearing it right now because I lost mine. There are certain times where I thought if I exert myself more over here, I'll burn more calories, I'll get fitter. But that's not true because I have the Fitbit. So it gives me, it's a unit of measurement. It tells me how much I'm capable of. It tells me what I need to do, what should be done. So the same way we can apply this to our own lives in time. We need to know where our time is measured where our time needs to be applied so the time theorist is all about time clearly from the name and there are two main um, applications that I can give you that can really help you with this time management so one is called rescue time and one is your general Google calendar now rescue time is a software that you can install on your laptop your phone any Safari Google extension and it measures how much time you're spending on your laptop. It's like your general screen time. But this analyzes what productive websites you're on, what unproductive websites you're on, and it compiles all that data and gives you a productivity score at the end of the day. Well, for a beginner, when I was doing it, I found that all really overwhelming. So I just stuck to the normal Google Calendar. And if you guys want me to do an entire video on how to use the Google Calendar, just um, comment down below and I'll make sure I make a video on that. Because Google Calendar has a really cool feature where you can colorize or color code your tasks according to a certain color and there's huge psychology behind that and I'm down to make a video so just comment down below. Now the whole reboot and rebuild process starts. Now many people can get this wrong. I got it wrong several times in the beginning and I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. Now that we've colored all the options and now we only have carrots now it's about intentionally bringing what we want into our lives. So now people are always confused. They're like, oh man, what do I bring into my life? I don't know, I think I need this, I think I need this. You don't know. So now you gotta weigh out the pros and cons. Now, a prime example is social media. Now the main pro of social media is, oh, if I'm not on social media, I'm gonna be missing out on whatever's gonna be happening. Well, yeah, that's a good point. But there are so many negatives to it too. You get easily distracted, you get into fear of missing out, you get into uh, procrastination, there's multiple things and the cons outweigh the pros. So the key word here is intentionality. It's about intentionally bringing things into our own lives. Now you gotta be very careful because I don't know if you notice or if it was only for my dopamine detox, but you had a lot of spare time if you have so much spare time, you gotta be careful to what you devote that time towards. So there's this YouTuber called Andrew Kirby who I actually got this entire dopamine detox idea from. I'll leave the link in the description. Where he explains how time is applied as an economic concept where we take the supply and demand curves. And in that video, he explains something which is actually counterproductive but it works. He says, the more you get on your plate, the less you procrastinate. And that makes so much sense. Let me give you an example. So I have a friend called Shamil and he's like a really, really busy guy. He's like a good science fan and all that. So he and I used to make our schedules every night at 10.30. We used to sit down for like half an hour and we used to like make sure we're getting our stuff done. He would completely fill his entire schedule with work, 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 work and like lunch and dinner and all. But me, I would stick to like the very basic minimal amount of work I need to finish. Now, he would finish like 80% of his entire schedule. Let's say he doesn't because of procrastination. But I would finish 80% of my schedule. And my schedule barely has new work, but his schedule has so much work. And that's when the entire concept of adding more things to your plate decreases the amount of procrastination we do. And, and bear in mind, this only applies for the 99% of the people watching this. I'm not talking about those that burn out and are overworked. 
Now coming back to the spare time thing, you gotta have so much spare time in your hands. So to make sure you don't fall back into social media constantly, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you need to find something to obsess over, something you're passionate about. And for me, that's my YouTube channel. So right now it's like, it's 3 a.m. and I'm making this video and that's just because I'm I'm interested in it. I genuinely want to do this. So you got to find things that you're passionate about and put all your time or all that spare time you have into this project. Because if you watched the previous video, you'd know the entire flow was instant gratification. And that's what we're trying to avoid right now. We're trying to avoid instant gratification. So another tip that I would give you that helps me again is to create multiple deadlines. If you've noticed, if you have a school project and um, the teacher says it's due, it's due by Thursday, you work on it only Wednesday night properly. So make sure you create a deadline that makes you finish it by Monday. Because we're human, we're going to not finish it by Monday, obviously. And we have a relaxed amount of time to actually be creative and do our best on the project. Now most of the people who are going to watch this video, hopefully, are going to be like, yeah man, I'm going to implement this. And then you implement it for like 3-4 days max and then you completely forget about it. Now a time theorist would not do that. He would make sure he's constantly reminded of doing this. And if you remember in the previous video, I said, make systems, not goals. And this is exactly an example of that. So I saw a comment recently on one of these detox videos. You basically become bored, that the boring things become fun. Okay, I'm just gonna give you one task to do, okay? And um, it's for your own benefit. If you don't do it, it's like your loss. I would say either get rescue time downloaded Get it onto your website, get into your get into the extension, add everything, or download Google Calendar and just schedule your day for tomorrow and tell me how it goes. You my Instagram is here, you can DM me anytime you want. Oh yeah, and those that are still at the ending, um, if you did do the journaling prompt I gave you for your dopamine detox, which was the third prompt, it said what are the daily habits I need to be doing to reach from where I am to where I want to be. That is exactly what you need to inculcate into your daily habits to make sure you improve. One of my habits was to read at least 15 minutes a day and I found that really hard. So I just downloaded Audible and I make sure before I go to sleep I at least listen to like 10 minutes of a book when I'm like brushing my teeth and whatnot. So I just want to end this video on a quote that I heard by this really big philosopher called Seneca. It's not that we have little time but more that we waste a good deal of it. Thank you.